Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Cosmic Culture, the channel where we talk all things major movie and television news, theories, breakdowns, and much, much more. Now, Thor Love and Thunder is coming out in only a few days, and with most projects in the MCU, it's possible that you may have missed a few steps. Granted, there are over 30, 35 different TV shows, series, shorts, and all sorts of different informations coming from comic books, from interviews from actors, things that you might want to know before you watch a Marvel movie. So for that purpose, today we have everything that you need to know before you go and watch Thor Love and Thunder this weekend. I'll be going over a spoiler-free introduction to the film, what has happened in the MCU in the past, what has happened recently, what has happened way back in the beginning that will be pertinent to Thor Love and Thunder, the fourth installment for Thor, and one of the big movies coming to Phase 4. A lot of people are excited for this as Chris Hemsworth's Thor is one of the few remaining OG Avengers, and we're going to be getting an explanation as to what's going on with him since the Avengers have been disbound at the end of Avengers Endgame. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below, but remember this will be spoiler free, although I will advise if you are trying to avoid spoilers, be careful what you go down into the comments to see, because some people just like to ruin the fun for everybody. With that being said, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our other daily updates. Also, you can check me out on my other socials, Instagram at Chris M. Rosser and Twitter at The Culture Chris. Now, with Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, we did a similar video, and a lot of you guys really seem to like it. However, with Doctor Strange, this was a movie that really required understanding many different moving parts of Phase 4. Thor Love and Thunder, on the other hand, is a little bit more of an independent movie. It doesn't rely on anything, really, that's happened in Phase 4. Whereas Multiverse of Madness, WandaVision was an important aspect, the Loki series, everything else going on in between, No Way Home, the multiverse, it was very well mixed together. So there were a lot of extremely important details that you might have felt a little bit lost with that film had you not known them. Now in this one, I have to give mad props. They did a very good job putting it all together so that you could just go and enjoy a Thor film. So if you don't want to have a massive headache, you can find a little bit of solace knowing that if you just go to watch the movie not knowing anything else about the MCU, you're going to have a great time. It's lighthearted, there are a lot of fun jokes that flow very well with the fast pace of the movie, but there are also some very heavy and exciting moments that will really get you thinking and even get you advocating for characters who maybe you didn't think you would. But if you would like to know every detail, what's going on, tell me about Thor, I'm going to talk to you like maybe you've never seen a single MCU project. So let's jump into it. Thor, Odinson, son of Odin, brother to Loki, has been involved in the MCU since the very, very early days. He had three movies prior to this one, Thor, Thor the Dark World, and Thor Ragnarok. He's also shown up in the Avengers projects, Avengers Age of Ultron, Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame, and was last seen at the end of Avengers Endgame, passing on the mantle of King of Asgard to Valkyrie, and he went off with the Guardians of the Galaxy in hopes to turn them into the Asgardians of the Galaxy, because that's what heroes do. That was a big part of how he spoke, of how he thought of himself. You know, you gotta go do the heroic thing, you've gotta go be that guy. And it picks up in an interesting part in Thor Love and Thunder, where, as we've seen in the trailers, he's a little bit lost and unsure what his path is. Now, this is not the first time Thor will undergo a huge character development. However, if you've been watching the earlier Thor movies, Thor 1 and 2, we had a character who was a little bit ignorant to earthly customs, a little bit more serious, and maybe even sometimes kind of came off as not smart. Then Thor Ragnarok and Taika Waititi rolled around and the character was 100% different. He was quick, witty, fun, goofy, and some people really loved this change and some people didn't. I'm going to tell you right now, if you didn't love the change in Thor Ragnarok from the original two Thor movies and his appearance in the Avengers movie where he's a little bit more stoic, a little bit more serious, and not all fun colors and jokes, well, this movie does have very similar vibes to Thor Ragnarok. I'm not going to compare the two movies as to which one's better in quality. I definitely need to watch Thor Love and Thunder again before I can really give you a fair analysis of that. However, this is very much a Thor Ragnarok-esque movie. Very comparable, for sure, in that aspect. The funny jokes, the colors, the fast pace, the movement, and a lot of moments taken in a silly manner. 
Now, that doesn't mean there are no serious moments, guys. This is something I really want to really hit home so that you understand you're going to have a good time with the character development of Gore the God Butcher with a lot of the stuff that Thor's going through right now. And quite honestly, Thor's had a pretty tragic life. Let's recap. Thor's father is dead. Loki is dead. The entire location of Asgard is gone. Even though Asgard's not a place, it's a people, it's still gone. They're currently living on Earth in New Asgard, and that's a whole crazy story of itself. We'll talk about that in just a second. Also, we need to remember that every single person that Thor's really loved or been in contact with is gone. His mom is gone, his friends are gone, Heimdall's gone, all of the individuals who he's fought with, except for the Guardians of the Galaxy, who are relatively new to him, all gone. And of course, his ex-lover from the first and second Thor movies, Jane Foster, is gone. It turns out Jane and Thor didn't really work out. Now this is going to be addressed in this film, and hopefully you'll enjoy what they give you as far as the relationship, the direction of their relationship, if they decide to get back together or if they don't. You know, that's going to be a fun part of the movie and you're going to enjoy that. But do recall, if you already forgot, Jane and Thor aren't currently together. In fact, they haven't talked in quite some time. The trailer that Thor Love and Thunder gave us cleared this up for us where she said, oh, it's been a few years, and he gives us the exact date of eight years, seven months, 23 days, whatever it was, that's probably not accurate. But he's been thinking about Jane, and he's lonely. His father's gone, his mother's gone, his brother's gone, Heimdall's gone, Asgard's gone, and he's running around the galaxy feeling a little empty. Conveniently enough, Jane is going to show back up, as again, you've seen in the trailers. There is another important thing about Thor's past in the MCU that you're going to want to know, and that is his weaponry. Obviously, anybody who knows Thor knows that along with him goes his trusty hammer, Mjolnir. However, in Thor Ragnarok, this was destroyed by his sister, Hela. Mjolnir, his hammer, who is literally like a best friend to him. And in Avengers Infinity War, we had the god-killing axe, Stormbreaker, which was created. Remember that this hammer has the ability to summon the Bifrost, and Mjolnir doesn't. This will be important, so just remember, Bifrost, Stormbreaker, Mjolnir, no Bifrost. And this is obviously explained to us in earlier projects of the MCU, and we see Thor using the Bifrost from Stormbreaker after its original creation in Avengers Infinity War in one of the, if not the, coolest Thor moments in the MCU. Of course, how could we forget that? Also remember, after Avengers Infinity War, when all seemed lost, he didn't aim for the head, all of everybody was just completely decimated by Thanos, he fell into a dark place, and that was when we got Brothor, the Fortnite playing, beer drinking, partying, hanging out with Korg and Meek, do nothing out of shape, Thor. And that's how we saw him through Avengers Endgame. So the last time we saw Thor, he left with the Guardians of the Galaxy, and he wasn't in the best Thor form ever. That will be addressed as well in the movie. I want to take a moment to talk about Odin's quote that Asgard is a people, not a place. Asgard was completely destroyed in Thor Ragnarok, as the prophecy foretold and it did happen. But the people got up and left. Now Thanos eventually intercepted them, killed a ton of them, and a few of them got away and have recreated new Asgard on Earth. You've seen in the trailers, and we had an idea that this has been an interesting topic. That now that Asgard is on Earth, what's going to happen? We've seen cruise ships and tours and all sorts of stuff. I think it's an important aspect of Thor's current mindset as an individual that Asgard is a people, not a place. But the place where Asgard is might be changing the Asgardians as people. I think it's also very, very important that you guys remember our Loki is dead. We've seen Loki season one, the, the TV show where Loki and Sylvie and many other versions of, of Loki, variants of Loki, are running around doing Loki things, but that is not our Loki. The Loki that we know from Avengers, from all the other projects we've had in the MCU, is dead. Thanos snapped his neck in half and dropped him on the floor in front of Thor. This is part of Thor's problems. He's had so many loved ones die in front of him, around him, near him. He kind of is just kind of walking death when it comes to loved ones and people around him. But do keep in mind, if you want to know anything about what's going on with MCU Thor, that Loki is also on the list of dead relatives, friends, and family, all of which does affect Thor's mental status. Now, I mentioned that at the end of Avengers Endgame, Thor went off with the Guardians of the Galaxy. If you don't know who the Guardians of the Galaxy are, very quick, James Gunn, the creative and fun mind, created a team of 
Scraps, a team of characters who scattered across the galaxy as individuals and came together to create a team, a family, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Made up at its core by Star-Lord, Rocket, Groot, Drax, Nebula, and Gamora, who, if you recall, in Avengers Infinity War, was killed by Thanos, and her variant was brought into the main MCU timeline, and all of that craziness has led to her separating herself from Star-Lord, who she was dating at one point briefly after Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. So that's kind of a very, very, very quick and rapid update for the Guardians of the Galaxy and those characters, in case you haven't seen those movies. At the end of Avengers Endgame, Thor did run off with the Guardians of the Galaxy in order to be a hero. Don't forget that in Thor Ragnarok we met Thor's best friends, Korg and Meek and Valkyrie, all people who are very involved in Thor Ragnarok, so if you don't know who they are, they're going to be Korg and Meek, characters who showed up from Thor Ragnarok. Now you don't necessarily need to know everything about who they are in order to enjoy the movie, but if you see them and you wonder who they are, they were initially meant in Thor Ragnarok and introduced to the MCU there. During Avengers Endgame, when Thor was going through his bro Thor phase, Korg was the one that was there for him, and Korg is played by director Taika Waititi, and he's a very, very fun character who's hard to not absolutely love. With all of that being said, what do you think? Are you ready for Thor Love and Thunder? There's a lot to know about the MCU, a lot of different details, things that have happened across the board of all of the projects, TV shows, shorts, interviews, explanations, things that maybe will help enhance your experience for the movie. But as I mentioned with this one, you can just go and have a fun time. So don't feel like you need to binge the entire Infinity Saga and then everything that's happened in Phase 4 with the new movies and the Disney Plus projects in order to understand and enjoy this movie. Yes, you can go and have fun without any of that knowledge. You can also invite your girlfriend who doesn't know anything about Marvel or your dad, your mom, your brother, your sister, your cat, your dog. All of them will have fun with this movie. Let me know any questions you might have. I'll answer some of them. I'm going to keep it spoiler free since the movie hasn't come out yet. And we will all have a fun spoiler chat later on. Live on Saturday will probably be the live spoiler chat. And then I'll probably do a spoiler review either Monday or a little later on, giving people some time to watch the movie. Thank you guys so much for watching to the very end of the video. If you found it helpful, useful, or entertaining, consider subscribing and turning on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our other updates happening daily right here on Cosmic Culture.